A few months ago, my 31 male, sister 29, announced that she would get married. The planning process took a while, but the date and venue were agreed on. Unfortunately, my sister has a baby, male, that just loves to cry. He cries all the time, unless someone takes him outside for fresh air. So a few days ago, the wedding started. Because I was out of town, I missed the night before the wedding. Basically a get-together period for family members and a big party, but showed up for the ceremony and reception. The second I got there, my sister asked me to take the baby outside to calm him down. I agreed because the ceremony hadn't started yet, but she asked me to take the baby outside again a while later. When I asked why the baby didn't have a sitter, she said they spent all the money on the ceremony and parties. I was annoyed because I wanted to sit in on the ceremony, but just about everyone jumped on me telling me to do my sister a favor that it was her day. I asked her about when I was expected to take the baby out for fresh air, and she gave me this huge list of times that meant I missed out on the important parts. I wouldn't be there for the exchanging of vows, the reception, the aisle walk, the readings, the kiss, etc. I figured out that in total, I would have about 30 minutes sitting inside, and the rest was just about the baby. When I pointed this out to her, she said someone would videotape it, but I wasn't convinced. I wanted to watch my sister reach a milestone, which I came for. I told her that someone else could watch the baby for her, and that as her brother, I wanted to watch the wedding and not have to miss her getting married. But again, she told me to just do it. I was really mad, but tried not to show it on the outside. When I asked about the reception, she told me, oh, you'll have to miss out. Baby's name needs to be outside and has to be fed. That was the final straw. And when my mother was holding the baby, I slipped out and just left. The next day, I got a call from my sister and she's screaming about how I ruined her wedding and how the baby wouldn't stop crying. I told her that I left because she treated me like a babysitter instead of a guest or a family member and said it was her fault if she couldn't get a nanny or ask a friend to do it. Since then, I've been nuked with calls from my family calling me selfish and telling me that I'm effectively disowned unless I apologize. I see no reason to. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Why couldn't she rotate baby duty between family members? She basically implied you were the least important person for her at the wedding. Plus, how expensive would it have been to hire a babysitter? Or your parents could have chipped in and gotten one. I find it funny that they're calling you selfish when it doesn't seem like any of them volunteered to take turns babysitting. So it would be fair. And at least you could go to witness some parts of the wedding. Even more important, why didn't sister just ask OP beforehand? He's not only the least important person at the wedding for the bride, but also not important enough to be notified before the actual ceremony. Sheesh. OP's sister's planning was very poor. Not having family members rotate the duty is one thing, but blowing all the money on parties without regard to their own child is another. Not the idiot. Were you the only person certified to hold a baby? My God, considering how all your family treated you, I'd take this as a goodbye gift and take my leave. Your sister could have easily asked for money for a babysitter, and I bet the family would have chipped in and helped out, but they decided you were better off babysitting and missing the whole wedding because screw you. If anything, you should be the one to demand an apology, not the other way around. You were a guest and family, and they manipulated you to be a babysitter. Double down and become the idiot of the year by sending her a bill for your time spent providing childcare, including transportation charges. Bet it's a rounding error compared to the money spent on the ceremony and parties that miraculously ran her bank account down to exactly zero, making hiring a sitter impossible. So when I, 35 male, was 22, I got married to Kristen. We had our son Skylar, tween, about a year into our marriage. Things were going pretty well, I felt. I was working, Kristen was staying home with Skylar. Things were tight, but I could buy us a home and provide a decent life. I was just getting started in IT, so the money was coming. We just had to be patient. Well, I came home one day and half the stuff is gone. So are Skylar and Kristen. Note on the counter, 
Kristen said that she was unhappy with our lifestyle, that she wanted something that wasn't mediocre and wanted to live a good life. She had been seeing someone else and was moving in with him, and I needed to get a lawyer. So we go through a nasty divorce and get split custody. So I remarried a few years later to my current wife, Alana. She's amazing and the most supportive person ever. We have one daughter together. I started my own IT consulting business about five years ago, and it's taken off, giving me, my wife, Skylar, and Gwen a nice life. My ex has had a string of boyfriends and hasn't remarried. We don't talk at all besides details about Skylar. So I got a call a week ago from Kristen. She was asking for a place to stay for a little bit. Her boyfriend was kicking her out, and she didn't have anywhere else to go. She wasn't going to be able to afford a safe place for her and Skylar. She asked if she could live in our guest house until she could find a place to live. I basically told her no, that she didn't deserve my charity after walking out on me a decade ago. As a mother, she needs to clean her crap up and provide for him, and that if she wasn't going to be able to afford a safe place to live, then I wanted to revisit the custody agreement because I don't want Skylar to move into some sketchy apartment or with some sketchy guy. But I told her I'd ask my wife and get back to her. My wife hates Kristen, but said she doesn't want Skylar resenting us if something happens to his mom. But she really doesn't want my ex to live here either and would prefer to revisit the custody agreement to give Skylar more stability. So we thought this was our chance to push for sole custody. My mom wants me to consider the message this sends to our son. My dad told me to remember the note on my counter 10 years ago and to think about what is best for my son in the long run. Am I the idiot? Edit. My ex-wife treats him well. Skylar loves his mom. She isn't a bad mom to him. We haven't asked his opinion because we're sure he would want her to move in. But I'd sooner give money to a slot machine than Kristen. She doesn't get child support and I wouldn't even pay for a hotel room for her. Not the idiot. Get Skylar in your house and call your lawyer. His well-being is the most important thing. It's not your responsibility to give her lodging. That's on her. Get sole custody while she sorts herself out and revisit it when she has a stable place. If she has no one else to stay with alone, then again, that's on her. Honestly, it will be harder to get her out if you let her stay, and it will be messier for everyone involved to have to kick her out later rather than just not let her move in now. You are the idiot. You don't have to kick Kristen to the curb by pushing for sole custody completely. You can help her in another way. The thing here is to do what's best for your son in the long run and for his mother to be secure. My suggestion is that you offer to take your son full time for maybe six months or so. This will give Kristen time to get a job and accommodations, allow her to take him for the day on weekends, etc. Once she has life sorted out, custody goes back to how it is now. You are the idiot OP. The message that that sends to your son is that people are responsible for their own actions and the consequences of them, but we don't take advantage of other people's misfortune. Your edit is showing your motivations are not about your child's best interest, but what appears to be revenge. Going for sole custody or having your ex-wife move in are not your only options, and you know it. My fiancé and I have a little son and two daughters. My fiancé has a brother, Joey, and Joey's married to Debbie. They've been married for about five years. Joey has a daughter who he had very, very young, is now in her 20s and moved out of the house, and Debbie has no children of her own. This means they're both late 30s empty nesters. Over the last few years, I've always been uncomfortable with them. Whenever we are around, Debbie will offer to cook, but not just something quick. She always has to make some elaborate BS, so everyone praises her nonstop. Last time, she picked some stuff out of her garden to make a quick dinner. Apparently, according to my fiancé and his friends, she basically caters to Joey 24-7, and I am constantly hearing from my fiancé that Debbie lets Joey do X, Y, and Z without getting mad, or Debbie does this or that. Basically, she's a trophy wife. Anyways, my fiancé has two sisters who are married and have children. Of course, Debbie can't help herself, and the tradition is she makes the kids a special cake for their birthday and decorates them and whatnot. 
in my experience, it's what I ordered versus a what I got thing. But again, she gets endless praise about her talent and whatnot. Anyways, I mentioned I was planning a birthday party for my son over a family dinner and she offered to make him a cake. Now, here is where I might be. Honestly, probably am. The idiot. I had just had it lately with how amazing she is in her life with literally zero real responsibility. So I told her I will let the professional women at Walmart handle it. And I didn't really want a woman whose ability to cook and wait on a man is the only thing she takes pride in setting an example for my children. So am I the idiot or am I right not to play into the yay domestic Debbie BS, especially in front of my kids? For the record, my family says I'm wrong. You are the idiot, OP. Who turns down more cake? This woman has done nothing literally to you except catering for free at her own toil. Your only complaint with her is that she's too nice to you. She's doing nothing but being kind when she literally grows the food, prepares it, and serves it to you for you to eat. There is no shame and no problem with you being in your 30s and having adult children and an empty nest. She's finding ways to fill her time and looking after people and cooking them food really isn't the worst way to do it. Also, you have no idea what a trophy wife is. Yeah, I chuckled at the trophy wife bit. OP used it wrong. Maybe OP thinks trophy wife means someone I'm jealous of. However, OP, while jealousy is a normal emotion to feel and does not define you as a person, the way that you react to it does. It's okay to feel jealous sometimes. However, it's not okay to be rude and put people down because of it. So you are the idiot. Yeah, trophy wives don't cook and garden. They go out with their friends, shop, get spa treatments and plastic surgery. The only work a trophy wife has to do is sleep with their spouse and be pretty and young. Sister-in-law seems to be an old-fashioned homemaker type. If she likes doing that, I have no issues with it. LOL, you are just super petty, jealous, bitter, and an idiot. Agreed. It seems OP's problem is more that she can't do the things Debbie can and a lot less to do with Debbie herself. And even if her best skills are domestic, there's no shame in that. People put their time and energy where it makes them happy. Debbie not having kids does not make her less. Debbie being good at cooking and baking does not make her less. Being petty, rude, misdirecting, and insecure makes OP an idiot big time. It would be much more beneficial to take some of that energy and work on OP and their relationship. I, female 34, am diabetic, and keeping packed snacks near me is essential because I often get low blood sugar due to issues with appetite. I don't eat lunch or dinner properly. My brother-in-law and his pregnant wife moved in with us a month ago. The issue began when my sister-in-law started eating my snacks that I usually keep inside the fridge. I tried buying more snacks, but sometimes they run out and I end up drinking water mixed with sugar in the middle of the night because I don't have anything else to eat and my husband won't go out to the store and get me anything. I told my husband and he told me to be patient with his brother's wife because she's pregnant and is considered sort of sick, so she needs to be cut some slack. I had it to be honest. I moved all my snacks into the bedroom and inside a box just to keep them safe. Sister-in-law said it was strange that I no longer buy snacks, but I told her that I still do. I just keep them safe in my room so no one can touch them. She side-eyed me, then an argument ensued after my husband and his brother came home. My husband scolded me for being rude to sister-in-law and childish for moving the snacks and keeping them in the bedroom. I told him why I did that though. He knew what was up, but he said I overreacted and that there was no harm in sharing. He demanded I put whatever snacks I have back into the fridge and stop acting like a child, but I said that I won't. And if his sister-in-law and her husband get upset, they need to understand that I'm diabetic and need those snacks essentially. He yelled in my face calling me childish, then walked out. Brother-in-law and sister-in-law are cold shouldering me, and my husband keeps pushing for me to put the snacks back into the fridge where they belong, or he won't speak to me as well. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She can buy her stupid snacks. 
She's gestating a baby, not turning into one. Brother-in-law and sister-in-law should spend less time eating snacks and more time job searching or interviewing so they can get on their feet again if they're about to have a baby. Jesus. Not the idiot. Let me get this straight. Two adults who are about to bring another human into the world are having a meltdown because you won't share your snacks? Please tell me there is a plan for them to move out soon because this will not get any better when the baby shows up. Then they'll have a laundry list of things you should be doing for them. I think OP needs to move. They don't understand she could die. Unless the pregnant lady also has diabetes, she will not die and the baby won't be harmed if she's hungry. OP will literally die if she doesn't have these handy. Aside from which, they belong to her. The husband yelling at his diabetic wife over snacks is the mega idiot. You are the idiot for telling sister-in-law that you were actually still buying snacks. You should have just agreed with her. Yes, it is funny I don't get them any longer, isn't it? And moved on. Bunches of red flags waving about your husband, though. Sister-in-law is considered sort of sick due to her pregnancy and needs special treatment, but you're not considered actually sick because of your diabetes and given the same special treatment? Your husband won't even run out to get you a medically necessary supply? He's putting sister-in-law's health above your own. He calls you childish for doing the responsible thing and making sure your medical supplies are on hand when you need them? I mean, the divorce lawyer is calling you. My parents own a couple of restaurants in our town and make good money from that. My father recently decided that he wanted to make a college fund for all of his grandchildren as he felt that was a much better investment. Now my sister's, Haley, husband Mark, has three children from his previous marriage that live with them and visit their mother on the weekend. And my sister and he have two children of their own. Both of them have their own business and earn a lot. My father wanted to create college funds for all five of the children, whereas I don't think that it's fair that he includes Mark's three children in the funds as they're not a part of the family. I mean, they don't even call Haley mom. Haley celebrates all the holidays with Mark's ex because of them. I, Alice, believe that Haley's stepchildren shouldn't be involved. I mean that it should be Mark's and his ex's problem and the amount of money Mark has I don't think paying for college for all three of the kids would be a problem at all. Plus, his ex has a well-paying job too. Plus, her current husband also has a huge business. However, my brother Alex thinks that I'm being insensitive and should have no problem whatsoever with them being included as they are part of our family. Am I the idiot here? I mean, Mark and Haley have been married for the last seven years, and my father really loves those three kids like his own, but still, loving someone like their own doesn't make them your own. You are the idiot. Did it ever occur to you that your opinion is completely irrelevant because that money isn't yours? You are wrong not just for trying to control what someone else does with their money, but also for saying that those children are not really part of the family. They are part of the family. Your sister is married to their dad and the children live with them. You shouldn't be trying to make children feel like they don't belong. Something tells me OP only cares because she's watching her inheritance shrink. Either way, you are the idiot. Stepkids are family, and your input means Jack. Seriously. I'm a child of a blended family, and if my stepfather's family had viewed us this way, my siblings and I would have been crushed. OP, stay away from your sister's family. They don't need your selfishness anywhere near them. You are the idiot. Your father could include the stray dog down the street in this college fund, and you would still get no vote. Your father decides how and who he wants to spend his money on. Also, how lovely that he looks past DNA and considers family those he loves, not just those he's genetically related to. And how lucky of you to have a father who wants to share his success with the next generation. How unfortunate for your father that he has such a selfish child.